I ventured into the Aokigahara forest on an overcast morning, where the ancient trees loomed like sentinels of sorrow. They whispered their tales of despair, for this place had earned a chilling reputation as the suicide forest of Japan. My curiosity had led me here, and as I stepped beneath the dense canopy, I felt an inexplicable heaviness in the air. The forest floor was covered in a thick carpet of fallen leaves, muffling each footstep. I couldn't escape the feeling that I was not alone. The silence was oppressive, and a sense of unease settled upon me like a shroud. Aoki Gehara was known for its eerie silence, and it was as if the very land held its breath, preserving the dark secrets within. As I wandered deeper into the heart of the forest, my attention was drawn to an ominous sight. There, hanging from a sturdy tree branch, was a lifeless body swaying gently in the breeze. My heart raced and I stumbled back in shock. The pale face and vacant eyes stared back at me, a chilling reminder of the forest's grim reputation. Fear clung to me like a second skin, but I couldn't turn back. I had to know more, to understand what could drive a soul to such a desperate end in this desolate place. The forest seemed to grow even darker, the trees pressing in around me. My unease turned to dread when in the distance, I caught sight of a shadowy figure. The man, dressed in tattered clothing, appeared to be in his forties. He was gaunt and disheveled with wild, unkempt hair. His eyes were hollow, devoid of any humanity, and in his hand he clutched a frayed length of rope. As I watched in horror, the man approached another tree, his movements slow and deliberate. He then began to fashion a noose at the end of the rope, his eyes never leaving the task at hand. It was as if he were a puppeteer, and the forest was his stage. I couldn't comprehend what I was witnessing. The man proceeded to place the noose around the neck of another lifeless body. He meticulously adjusted the knots and secured the rope. It was then that I realized the true horror of the scene. The forest, it seemed, had claimed his sanity as well. I was paralyzed by the fear that I had stumbled upon a deranged killer, someone who was using this cursed place as a macabre stage for his gruesome performances. The man seemed lost in a twisted ritual, lost to the darkness of the forest. In that moment, survival became my only instinct. I retreated quietly, my heart pounding in my chest. I couldn't risk encountering that man any further. The path back felt like an eternity, and I dared not look back to see if he pursued me. I emerged from the haunted woods, shaken and horrified by the evil that lurked within Aokigahara. I reported the gruesome discovery to the authorities, hoping that they would put an end to this reign of terror. But the memory of that man, the embodiment of despair and death, still haunts me to this day. Hiking in the woods used to be my favorite escape from the hustle and bustle of life. But one day, during a routine hike, I stumbled upon something that continues to haunt my nightmares. It all started like any other hike, surrounded by the serene beauty of the forest. The sun's rays pierced through the leaves, casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. I had walked these trails countless times, but on this particular day, an unsettling feeling washed over me. A strange and ominous presence seemed to lurk in the shadows. My instincts told me to turn back, but my curiosity got the better of me. I pressed on, deeper into the woods, trying to locate the source of my unease. With each step, the feeling of being watched grew stronger. My heart raced, and I couldn't shake the sense of foreboding that clung to me like a dark cloud. I was on edge but continued my journey, pushing deeper into the woods to uncover the mystery. The further I ventured, the stranger things became. I could hear faint, distant chanting that sent shivers down my spine. It was unlike any forest sound I'd ever heard, eerie and unsettling. I followed the strange noise, against my better judgment. As I approached the source of the sound, I knew I was entering uncharted territory. The forest had always been a sanctuary, but now it felt like an alien and hostile place. My senses were overwhelmed with a palpable sense of dread. Finally, I stumbled upon a clearing, and what I saw there sent a chill down my spine that lingers to this day. In the center of the clearing, a group of people dressed in strange hooded robes encircled a roaring fire. Their chant was incomprehensible and symbols were etched on the ground around them. The atmosphere was thick with an otherworldly energy. Fear gripped my heart, but I couldn't tear my eyes away from the bizarre spectacle. I could see nothing of their faces. The hoods obscured them completely. It was clear that I had stumbled upon a secret sect, hidden deep within the heart of the forest. My heart raced as I watched them, frozen in terror. 
The chanting grew louder and more intense, and it felt like something out of a horrifying nightmare. I knew I had to alert the authorities and escape as quickly as possible. I turned to leave, but in my haste, stepped on a twig, which snapped with a deafening crack. The chanting ceased abruptly, and every hooded figure swiveled to face me. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. They couldn't see my face, but I knew I was in grave danger. In an instant, I made a split-second decision to run, leaving all caution behind. I could hear their footsteps pursuing me and their eerie voices echoed through the trees. Terror consumed me as I raced through the woods, my mind a blur of fear and confusion. I knew I had stumbled upon something sinister and that these people would stop at nothing to keep their secrets. I managed to make it out of the woods and reached out to the authorities to report what I had witnessed, but when they arrived to investigate, they found the clearing empty and the sect had vanished without a trace. To this day, I can't shake the memory of that chilling encounter in the forest. As a teenager, my family often enjoyed camping at a remote state park, and my friend and I had our own peculiar tradition we called the ritual. Every night, we'd venture into the dark woods with nothing but flashlights. It was our way of testing our bravery and navigating the eerie darkness. One fateful evening, we decided to carry out our ritual again. The full moon loomed overhead, casting unsettling shadows that stretched across the forest. As we ventured deeper into the woods, we began to hear something truly unsettling. Soft, eerie whispering, as if someone were sharing secrets in hushed tones. It sent a shiver down our spines, and we couldn't help but halt to listen closely. In the dim moonlight, we could see nothing unusual around us, just the quiet moonlit forest. But the whispering persisted and grew louder, as if it was getting closer. We felt a palpable sense of being watched. Our unease prompted us to switch on our flashlights, hoping to uncover the source of the whispering. However, as the beams of our flashlights pierced the darkness, they revealed nothing out of the ordinary. We were still alone in the silent woods. Despite our fear, curiosity got the best of us, and we decided to press forward. It was a mix of excitement and dread that pushed us to continue our search for the elusive whisperer. With each step, the whispering seemed to grow louder, and an eerie feeling hung heavily in the air. We couldn't shake the sense that something was terribly amiss. Then, through the trees, we saw her, an unsettling figure. A woman, clad in filthy, tattered clothing, was crawling on the ground, muttering strange, incomprehensible words. When the lady noticed our presence, she abruptly stood up in a disconcerting, unnatural manner. Her gaze was intense, and her words remained cryptic. She claimed to be searching for her campsite, but her explanation only deepened our unease. We couldn't bring ourselves to leave her alone in the dark woods, so we made the unsettling decision to accompany her back to the campground. Our intentions were to reunite her with her friends. Yet when we arrived, a chilling revelation awaited us. Her friends, seemingly unperturbed by her absence, had not even noticed she was gone. Their indifference was chilling. We couldn't explain the bizarre encounter we had witnessed that night, and its unsettling mystery continued to haunt our thoughts and dreams. One dark night, my friends and I decided to explore a big spooky forest. The trees were tall, and it was so dark that we could hardly see anything. We were in search of an adventure, but the forest made us feel really scared. We were four friends, me, my best buddy Mark, my adventurous friend Emily, and John, who always made jokes. At first we were laughing and talking, but as we ventured deeper into the forest, we began to feel uneasy. The forest was eerily quiet, and we thought we heard strange sounds. It felt like the forest was closing in on us, and we couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. Despite our growing fear, we kept going because we craved an adventure. Then, Emily's flashlight illuminated something shocking. She let out a loud scream and we all turned to see what had frightened her. Her flashlight revealed a gruesome sight, a body torn into pieces and scattered around. It was so horrifying that we all gasped in shock. Our brave leader, Sarah, cautiously approached the gruesome scene to investigate. The dismembered body was a gruesome sight, and we couldn't believe our eyes. The forest felt even scarier now. Mark, the calm one among us, said, Call the police! Emily was trembling as she dialed 911 on her phone. We had to wait for the police to arrive, and the forest seemed to grow scarier with each passing minute. We huddled together, shining our flashlights on the dismembered body. The night had turned into a nightmare. Suddenly we heard a noise coming from the nearby bushes. 
Our flashlights darted around, casting eerie shadows on the trees. Out of the darkness emerged a man. He looked disheveled, with wild hair and empty eyes. Sarah asked, Who are you? But the man just stared at the dismembered body, not saying a word. We were all so scared. The man began to move closer to the gruesome scene, and our hearts raced. We couldn't move or make a sound. The forest had taken this man's mind, and he was acting like a lost soul. The police arrived just in time, scaring the man away. We told them about the horrifying scene we had discovered, and they searched the forest. They found more chilling things that night, revealing the dark secrets hidden within the woods. When we left the forest, we felt like we had narrowly escaped something truly evil.